Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new video. So this weekend, headed to Wicked Big Meat. I've already made a few announcements in a couple other videos. Um, going to be getting the car ready uh, over the weekend to get everything set so uh, I can head out there. It's uh, three and a half, a little over three and a half hours. Uh, so I got to leave super early in the morning, uh, but I'm going to get the car cleaned up this weekend. Probably got to do a wash on uh, either Friday night or Saturday uh, afternoon. Either way, I'll probably update you guys in a video when I'm getting the wash done and everything. Um, I'm going to be doing a separate video, of kind of what I do to prep for a longer drive. It's just kind of the basics, going around, making sure everything's okay. Uh, I got to pack up a few things of what I take uh, when I go on longer drives, just to make sure I have everything I need just in case something happens and whatnot. Plus, I do plan on doing a rinseless wash at the show. Because um, obviously I'm going to be driving quite a long ways, so the car's going to get pretty dirty. Uh, and it being, I guess, my first car show in like a decade, <laughs> um, I want the car to look uh, decently nice. Especially after driving on such a long trip, um, you know, it's going to get riddled with bugs up front. And, um, you know, I'm going to make sure the wheel's looking good. And, you know, so we'll do a cleanup. My buddy Matt is actually going to help me uh, with the rinseless wash. I'm not a big fan of rinseless washes, but he actually details. He's an Obsessed Garage member and everything like that, so... Um, he's very, very knowledgeable in that aspect as well. Uh, so I do trust his ability to help me out and get this car cleaned up. So we're going to do that the day of the show once I get in uh, and get the car cleaned up. But what I want to go over in this video is just a little discussion because uh, I've been getting this question a lot lately. Uh, I'm not sure what triggered this question. I'm not sure why people are asking this so often all of a sudden. A lot of people have asked me recently why I'm staying so motivated with this car. How come I'm not selling it? How come I haven't moved on to anything else? You know, I've had it for five and a half years. You've done so much to it. You know, what is what else is there to do? Why are you hanging on to it? Why do you still want to keep this car? It really got me thinking as to why this car is still in my garage, why I'm still hanging on to it, why I continue to modify it. So I thought it was a good idea for a video to kind of explain as to why I still have this car because I know a lot of people have a very similar mindset to me. So it may help some others as well. So I figured I would go over my list just to let you know as to why I still have the STI. Now the STI for me has been a long time bucket list car. It's a car that I've wanted ever since I was a kid. And I told myself whenever I had the opportunity, whenever I was able to purchase one, I would do it. Uh, and five and a half years ago, I did. I bought the car brand new from a Subaru dealer, got everything that I wanted. Um, and it has been an absolute pleasure. So it being one of those bucket list cars and, and kind of always wanting one, it has made this car more special than I ever thought it could be. For me, when I got it, I was like, hey, you know, I'm going to hang on to this for a few years. It'll be fun, uh, but then I'll be ready to move on to something else. But here we are, five and a half years later, still enjoying it immensely, still modifying it. Um, and every single time I drive it, it still brings a huge smile to my face. So having that huge sentimental feeling, that huge sentimental part of it uh, in my mind is a big reason as to why I'm still hanging on to this car. It still feels like I just got it. Um, every time I drive it, since I'm not driving it as much as I used to, it feels more of an experience. It feels more special to me every single time I drive it, which is a good thing because it's still reminding me that this car still is special. With the way things are going in the automotive world, with everything going to electric and um, you know people banning car mods and doing a bunch of stuff with the EPA and all that, um, it's starting to become uh, even more of a realization of how... Uh, amazing this car is. When they introduced the new generation, the VA chassis, everyone's saying they're hating it because it had the same motor, it looks terrible, blah, blah, blah. Now everybody loves this chassis. Everyone, a lot of people are saying this is one of the best, if not the best. Um, you know, obviously that's very subjective, but you know, it's become one of those cars that people are lusting after. And now knowing that the STI is no longer being made, uh, it has become even more so. After all this time of owning it and modifying it, I've realized the longer I'm hanging on to this car and the more that I do to it, it actually is making me appreciate this car even more. The number two reason why I'm still hanging on to this car is simply the aftermarket support. To me, modifying a car is a huge part of my ownership. I can't leave things alone. I can't leave things completely stock. It's just not in my nature. Ever since I was a kid with all my bikes, all my mountain bikes and everything, modified everything. I was changing the suspension, tires, <laughs> pretty much the stuff that I do on cars today, just obviously in a bigger scale. Um, you know, I, I was always tinkering with things, even, even as a little kid with my Legos and all that stuff, trying to make them better, trying to make them different and everything. Um, and that was just the nature of me. That's just what I enjoyed. 
Um, so having that aftermarket support is incredibly important. So when I picked up this car, or even before I picked up the STI, the aftermarket support for this car is absolutely insane. You literally can replace everything with, uh, you know, pretty much an aftermarket part, which is great. But a huge part of that is not just for aftermarket parts, but it's simply the fixes. And what I mean by fixes is this motor obviously has been around for a very, very long time. Um, so people are very knowledgeable on it. So if there's an issue that's kind of happening to your car, most likely, you know, a hundred other people have experienced it and there's a fix for it. There's an aftermarket solution to fix that problem. With any performance oriented car, there's always going to be that Achilles heel, you know, with M cars, with the E46 M3 specifically that I owned. Um, there was SMG pump failures, there was subframe issues, there was Vanos issues, um, all that stuff now has a fix for it. There's stuff that you can do that bulletproofs all that. With the EJ motor, you can get AOSs, cylinder four cooling mods, fuel stumble kits, a car with such aftermarket support. There's a huge backing. Many enthusiasts that are willing to take the time, the effort, the R&D to get specific parts to fix those issues so we can continue on enjoying our cars. Uh, and that is super important. I would hate to have gotten a car that I like or that I love, uh, but there's no aftermarket support. There's no modifications for it. There's no fixes for any issues. Um, that's just not fun to me. You know, I feel like I would get really bored of it very, very quickly uh, and I would kind of move on to the next. So having the knowledge out there and having the fixes for any issues that may come about um, is definitely a huge aspect as to why I'm still hanging on to this car. The third reason why I have not gotten rid of this car is simply the people, the community. Um, since starting this YouTube channel, obviously people are coming to see the car. I mean, that is kind of what initially brings them to this channel. Um, they're curious, they watch the videos and everything, have questions. Uh, but overall, people come to this channel for this specific car because there is such a huge community. Um, and everybody that I talk to for the most part, um, and everybody that kind of follows my journey and everything, it's honestly, everybody is so nice. It's really hard to find a community that has such willing and helpful people. Anytime that I pose a question about what to do next, or I'm thinking of doing this or that, so many people just reach out to me offering their opinions or feedback. And it's just absolutely insane. It's so cool to have that community in a car that you love. I mean, it really, really does make this whole experience of owning this car that much better. For example, I'm going, like I mentioned, I'm going to Wicked Big Meat. Um, you know, a lot of you guys do know the modifications on my car, but I understand not everybody watches the channel or the videos and everything and knows everything that was done. One of my subscribers who's followed me for quite a while, who drove me to and from my shop to pick up the car when we we're doing the turbo and everything, um, he actually reached out and was like, hey, I know you're going to Wicked Big Meat. Um, you know, I know a lot of people don't know everything that was done to your car. It'd be really cool if you had a mod list somewhere so people can see it. And I was like, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, not a big deal, whatever. And sure enough, he made me one of these, which is really, really cool. Um, it's literally every single modification that I have on the car with a little QR code that brings you right to the YouTube channel and all that. Um, and, and that's freaking awesome. I'm going to actually put this in the window on the inside so anybody at Wicked Big Meat can take a look, see everything that is done. And it's just one of those things. And understand it's not the biggest deal in the world or the hardest task to do. But he did it on his own time. He was like, hey, I want to help you out. I mean, he's not even going to the meet and he did this for me. He just did it as a favor just because he's a nice person. And uh, that's kind of the community that we have been building around here, which is really, really cool. Uh, so having that community, having the people around, um, it's just one of those things that I love uh, about owning this car. Anytime I'm driving it and I see another Subaru owner, um, before I even get a chance to wave, they're waving right back at me or flashing their high beams. It is such a cool atmosphere, cool club, if you want to call it, to be in. And I'm really, really honored to be kind of representing the brand um, you know, on the channel and everything and kind of showing my journey. So the community, the people, is another reason as to why I'm hanging on to this car for so long. Last but not least, uh, the reason why I have hung on to this car for so long, which is probably the most important one, is simply because of how simple this car is. Over the years, I have driven some really, really fun, cool cars, some cars that a lot of people haven't even gotten a chance to drive in or you know, dream of driving and everything, um, and kind of coming back to the basics uh, with this car always is so refreshing. It's a true manual transmission car, a great one at that. It's one of the best I've ever driven, to be completely honest. Very notchy. It feels fantastic. It's extremely durable and reliable. The overall steering feel feels very, very mechanical. I mean, anywhere you point the steering wheel is exactly where the car goes. 
There's no electric steering or anything like that. You don't have to push any certain buttons to make the car feel a certain way or sound a different way or have sound being pumped through the stereo of the car. Literally, if you want to hear the exhaust, you roll the windows down and that is your audible sound. You know, you can hear the car. You can hear everything working. I've talked about this before, but it is such old technology, but it's becoming the best technology. I understand the newer cars are more efficient and there's a lot of cool little gadgets and kind of gizmos and stuff that you can get with them. But every single time I get in one of those and then I come back to this, it's just so refreshing to get into something that it's just honestly a true driver's car that it's just meant for fun. Um, it's It doesn't get better than that. You know, I can easily just sell this car and go out and get something insane, get a, you know, a newer M3 or something like that, which are still fantastic cars, don't get me wrong. There's just something about this specific car that is really, really hard to put into words. Unless you own one or modified it to the extent that I have, I don't think you can truly appreciate this car because honestly, this is one of the best cars that I've ever driven. It's one of the most fun cars that I've ever driven and it is probably the most enjoyable experience uh, of car ownership I have ever had. So I understand that this car, the STI, is not for everybody. Other people will go out and try different things and enjoy them more, which is totally fine. This is just my opinion and I wanted to share them with you guys because I know, like I said, a lot of you are in a very, very similar mindset as me with this car. And I thought it would be helpful to kind of share those thoughts that I was going through because a lot of people were asking me that question recently. So I thought I'd make a video on it going over everything as to why I'm still hanging onto this car. So I know this video was quick and short and nothing too exciting, but like I said, I'm preparing the car to go to Wicked Big Meet this weekend, so I got a lot to do. Uh, I just wanted to get a video out for you guys so you have something to watch before the weekend. I will be doing a video on the entire meet, you know, kind of my journey. I'm not going to be doing any crazy edits or anything like that. I'm just going to be taking you along with me so you guys feel like you're kind of going to the meet with me, showing you all the cool cars that I come across and, uh, you know, I guess meeting some of you guys, so hopefully you will make it onto the video or the vlog if you want to call it that. And I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a long, long day. But any day that I can spend around cars is a good day to me. So I will see you guys there on Sunday. But as for this video, that is it for this one. If you have any questions at all about the car or anything else, please ask them in the comments below. But in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.